today we'll talk about interval of convergence. We kind of talked about it before. It applies to all power series. Power series meaning we have X, but most relevantly, this is about the Taylor series, right? Okay. But if you have any power series, then this thing inevitably will converge at some interval on real number line, starting at the center in this in this case three, because once you substitute three for X, then everything is zero. So that's definitely conversion. This thing is zero. You know what I'm saying? And maybe you can go out a little bit. In case of a to the x sine x cosine x, it actually reaches out to infinity, right? So it converges everywhere. And most series are not that nice. In case of the geometric series, it only converges from negative one to positive one, right? So. That is our interest to find out where this thing converges. OK, let's do it. So one of the most useful thing and when it comes to this, of course, is a ratio test. So we'll perform ratio tests. Once again, you don't have to write the title of ratio test when you do this. OK, if you do it, then I will know what you're doing. And ratio test is done this way, limit and approaching infinity, absolute value, huh? Maybe I sh you know how to take a ratio test, but it's always the ratio of this thingy, right? Regardless whether this is a power series or not. Okay, so in our case, limit and approaching infinity of, let's see, our thingy, so we have x minus 3 to the nth power over n here. Therefore, I would have x minus 3 and plus 1 power over n plus 1. With a gigantic absolute value. Good. You put x plus 3. You put x, yeah. Yeah, nice catch. Yeah, it's better that you cut it now rather than later. Okay. Now, of course, that thing simplifies to limit as an approaching infinity of x minus 3 over n plus 1. Uh, no. God, algebra. Did you know that I screwed up in algebra 2 class two days in a row? And then x minus 3. For some reason, I cannot do algebra no more. Why is that? Okay, now we take the limit. I write this n here first because this has nothing to do with n anymore, right? And that whole thing converges to 1. So we have just x minus 3. Good. Now, what was the condition of the convergence of ratio test? So series is conversion. Conversion 1. Uh huh. If n on here, this is by conditional both ways, your result of the ratio test needs to be strictly less than one, right? So far so good. So that tells you your axis between two and four. Too much algebra? You want me to show you how to solve that absolute value inequality? Although I lost my ability in algebra, I'm pretty sure I can still explain it. It's so much better to do it in our head, right? Actually, I'm going to show you my... Maybe some of you have been doing this already. Some of you haven't done it at all. But this is my graphic way of solving absolute value inequality. Watch this. This is very convenient. Your center. Your center is at three, isn't it? Right? And your radius is one. Imagine you're drawing a circle of a radius one. What? Why did it become an ellipse? Okay, let me try that again. You are drawing a circle with a radius one. You know what I'm saying? And people actually, mathematicians use this and actually call it ball, unit ball all the time. So radius is one here. 
and this way is one, two, good. Then you see this point is two and this point is four, right? See, between two and four, how about that? How do you like this way? Pretty good, isn't it? So we can actually look, that's how I do it. I, it's not like I actually split it up and set it up. No, 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 I just like center three plus or minus one, bang, you get it? Three plus or minus one. And this picture has a big, big, big relevance here, okay? We say this is a vocab, radius of convergence. Actually, there is a term. Convergence. Ah, I'm going to learn to spell convergence. Guess what that radius of convergence is in this problem? One. You get it? This is your radius of convergence. You get it? Plus or minus something. I mean, you are literally drawing a circle. Okay, and then our interval of convergence then oh we can't do interval of convergence yet do you know why because ratio test is inconclusive when this is equal to one you know what i'm saying so when x is equal to two or x is equal to four this thing is inconclusive so we don't know you know what I'm saying? OK, so what do we do? Any nice suggestions? On what we are supposed in. to? Yeah, we have to actually test the boundary. OK, this is more like, more like 9.5 than 9.4, but why don't I just do it? OK, so boundary. Boundary here meaning x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 4. Basically boundary, this is the interior of the circle and then boundary of the circle is kind of what it means. Later this term actually gets a whole lot more relevance and later in your life if you pursue this thing. Okay, number one. When x is equal to 4. Okay, and some people actually still do ratio tests with this. Guess what you're going to get? You'll get 1, so don't bother, right? Think about it. If you put four here, right? This thing is equal to one, so you get one as a ratio test. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so ratio test will definitely be one, but then how do we do this, right? We plug it in into the series and we figure it out. Okay, in that case, our series, which is, was it from one or was it from zero? It was from one to infinity of our x minus three to the nth power over n, whatever that was, will turn into, you just plug in four here, so it becomes this. Ah, that, we recognize that thingy, don't we? This is harmonic series now, isn't it? And we know it's divergent, but we cannot say this the harmonic series, therefore it's divergent. So we still have to show our case. Do you still remember how to do this? Integral test? One, two, infinity, one over x, dx. Wait, let's get this thing straight. What's the direction of the... Is that way correct or do you want it the other way? Many of you missed this on the test, so this way and then it's index is that one or is that two which way is it should be you want me to draw the rectangle one last time who wants to see the rectangle show hands can i see the rectangle yeah sure let's see that rectangle okay this is like uh let's draw just a few rectangles to make a point here so my one over x looks like this, right? And then this, we want that rectangles to be above this thing, right? 
So my rectangles, let's say starting from here, looks like this. Let me draw one more just for prettiness. So these are the rectangles. So this is rectangle number one, two, three, and this left hand corner is one, correct? And my integral starts from right there. Ah, so it's, it is one now, isn't it? Say yes. Okay. Yeah. And this now is, we we'll go down limit, B approaching infinity of integral from 1 to B, right? And that is, is it ln? Because the negative 10 point rule will still apply, so we have to be sure before you write such a thing. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, and then this is now ln B minus ln1, ln1 being 0 and ln B approaches infinity. So our conclusion here is the series is divergent. You know what I'm saying? This is divergent. At x is equal to 4. So far so good. Any questions? Okay, we tested one boundary, we'll test the other boundary. What about the other point? X is equal to negative two. Okay. Isn't it positive two? Okay. Isn't it positive two? Oh. oh my God. Why am I messing up so much more lately? I, I blame the COVID-19 pandemic. It has taken a toll on my cognitive skills. Okay. <laughs> So this thingy, our from 1 to infinity of x minus 4 to the nth power over n now becomes from 1 to infinity, you're plugging in 2 here. So that becomes negative 1 to the nth power. Ah, oh, that's alternating series now, isn't it? Negative 2. I think we screwed up all the way. Oh my God. Wait, no, 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 no. What did I miscopy? Oh, it's three. God. Our original problem had three in here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, mis I, I did that too yesterday in algebra two. <clears throat> For some reason, this simple equation doesn't factor. And I was going crazy and it was on the recording too, right? Later, I realized I miscopied the problem. Dyslexia strikes again. Did I tell you I'm mildly, mildly dyslexic? Yeah, yeah, I had dyslexia growing up. I didn't realize it. I just thought I suck at reading. But now I blame the disease. Okay, I mean, they always find every excuse for any little, yeah, it's always a disability. Okay. Okay, now, good. Don't bother with the absolute convergence test. Do you know why? Because we already did it here, right? It's, it's that very absolute convergent test, isn't it? You just take away the alternating sign. So we know it ain't gonna work. And if it worked here, then you don't have to test this one, right? It works both sides. You just put absolute value here and say, see, it converged here, so it'll converge here as well. For that reason, you always want to do this positive side first at the boundary, okay? Because you might get lucky. If it's convergent here, then this will converge as well. But let's do it. So number one, alternating series test, right? So we check limit of one over n, and you still remember this? So today, this homework is mostly a lot of reviews of uh, previous supplements, okay? 
this is zero. OK, number one is good. Number two, I'm going to start here. So I want B n plus one is less than or equal to B n for all n, right? OK, that is true if and only if my one over n plus one is less than or equal to one over n, right? And of course, that's true if this is the case. And this is true always, isn't it? So this is true for all n. OK, now it passes the alternating series test. So our conclusion here is the series is convergent. at x is equal to 2. Good. Now, so finally, we can say interval of convergence, therefore, interval of convergence is 2 included and four excluded because we already had interior from the ratio test up there. You know what I'm saying? And then some of the homework problems either today or tomorrow will say this, so I might as well, right? The series is absolutely convergent. Ah, why can't I spell? Convergent. Guess where is absolutely convergent and conditionally convergent? Somebody answer that question. Conversion is not a not an easy thing to spell. Is it conditionally convergent at bracket at? two comma four bracket? No. Just remember, at interior, it was absolutely convergent. Let's talk about where this is absolutely convergent. Absolute convergence meaning where it passed the ratio test. Do you see it's between two and four? Mm -hmm. Boundary excluded? Yeah. And this is then, do you see that? That um, point is the condition. See, alternate yeah. series, it only converges due to alternating series at that point, and that's it. Everywhere else here, it already passed the ratio test. So this was ratio test, remember, was absolute convergence test. You get it? OK, in case you have to answer it, answer this question, in case the question was worded this way, then you answer it like that. If the question, question just says, find the interval of convergence, then you just give this and you don't care whether it's absolute or conditional, right? It's still convergent. However, if the question says, just find the radius of convergence, then you didn't have to do all this extra work. You know what I'm saying? You answer it right there and then you're done. Because every year I see, the question was find the radius of convergence and students end up wasting time in the middle of the test and that precious time doing this. No, 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 no. You just needed this. Remember that circle? So radius of convergence is so much easier question than interval of convergence. You get it? Good. One last thing. In case of sine cosine where it converges every year, everywhere, guess what that radius of convergence is? Infinity. Infinity. Right? The circle is infinitely big to contain all of this number line. You get it? OK, well then, we'll do this problem. OK, this is a Lagrange error problem as a review. OK, smallest value of n. So that this thingy, in this interval, with the error less than, truncation error less than 10 to the negative 6. OK, let's do this. Maybe you don't need this anymore because you're done with your test, but hey, you might be struggling. So hey, one last effort, f of x. Wait, sorry, could you zoom out a little bit for the question? There. Oh, oh thank you. Right, uh, yeah, you're not missing much. 
Um, yeah, that contains f of x is e to the 2x now. A0 plus A1x. They are centering it at 0. Unlike your quiz, none of you centered it at 0, right? If you did, then you have how many hours left to fix it? Three. A1x squared plus A, uh, A2. A3x cubed and da da da. So we plug in 0. And this becomes 1, not 0. Why does my algebra suck so much lately? Do you guys find that algebra is harder than calculus? Or is it just me? See, whenever I meet people in the golf course, then we are like, guys, for some reason, always ask, what do you do? Wait, you think I can do this Taylor series while talking about some other useless stuff? Watch this. So, I don't know why guys always have to ask each other what they do, what we do, what we do. And so, as I say, oh, I'm a teacher. And then, of course, they have to have a follow up question, right? What do you teach and what grade do you teach, right? And I say, I teach calculus mostly. And they say, oh, wow, calculus, right? And I, but I just don't say anything. Yeah, but I found out that calculus is the easiest thing to teach. Algebra one, oh my God, that's the toughest class to teach. Can you imagine that? Like this class is the easiest to teach. Actually, there's even easier class to teach than this class. Guess what that is? Advanced calculus. Yes, of course, that's a lot easier. Why is that? People who struggled with math and really never advanced, so looking from the bottom up, oh my God, calculus is way up there and I never got to calculus in high school. To those people, of course, it seems hard, but I already passed all that, so whichever is uh, closest to my degree, what I've been doing in college, is the most recent in my memory now, isn't it? See, as you can see, I can do this with my eyes closed. Now watch me screw up now, right? Like that, right? See, I can talk about other stuff and still do this. But whenever I do algebra, God, I screw up daily. Okay. For you, is it easier to teach elementary school math or middle school math? It's kind of like that. Middle school math is still more recent in your memory, right? So this becomes 3 factorial A3. I'll write one. Okay, so we definitely see the pattern here now, don't we? Maybe I was talking about useless stuff, so you don't see the pattern, but... Three cubed. You see, I screwed up. Wait, Mr. Kim, for a problem like this, are we not allowed to microwave? Uh, Lagrange error typically is very difficult and tend to backfire if you microwave. Okay. Yeah, this is not to find the Taylor series that you can microwave. Right? I wrote four here. See, I finally screwed up. See, I, I was saying I can do this with my eyes closed and they, I watched it's me. Yeah. It's two cubed on the top. <laughs> of course. Of course it is. Ah. Maybe I cannot do it with my eyes closed, right? This is going to make a terrible video. It's okay. I mean, this is a basic stuff up to here. Uh, whoever's watching this video is going to feel really bad, right? Because when I say this is the basic stuff, then what do you mean? Taylor series is not basic. It depends on who you're talking to. Now, da da da, right? Da, da, da. 
So when we get to nth derivative, we definitely, definitely see that pattern, all right? That nth derivative will be, tell me, 2 to d? N. N, and e to d, 2x is equal to n factorial here, and a n, and dot, 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 wouldn't it? Well, then you can also do the next thing, which is n plus 1, and might as well just shove in C here, because that's what we need for Lagrange error, correct? And that will be 2 to d, tell me. n plus 1. n plus 1, and e to d, 2c, you know what I'm saying? And the other side will still be n plus 1, factorial a n plus 1, dot, dot, dot. And these things don't die because we put it put in C. But now this is what we need for Lagrange error, correct? So let's do the Lagrange error. Lagrange error is equal to one last time to remind you what happened. Why that thing? Oh, I have this thing. F of C, C I screwed up. The com this computer messed me up. N plus one power evaluated C over N plus one. Now I have proven it for you. So you feel very comfortable using this, right? So substituting, this is now, the, I have calculated the Lagrange error here at two N plus one. And then e to d to c, good. And then I would have over n plus 1 factorial, and here's x to the n plus 1 is our Lagrange error. Good. So far with me. I didn't put absolute value yet, but notice this could be positive or negative depending on the x value. Okay, so my maximum error now, now I'm gonna put absolute value, needs to be less than or equal to. Now, what do I substitute for C? We have to remember what the range of X values is. Oops, that's really... Okay, let's go back to the problem and see. X on, this is our range of X value, correct? So come back here, since X varies, just spell it out. Since X is between zero and one, right? And then of course, C should be between our center zero and X, so we should choose since yes. Uh, it's exclusive, not inclusive. I have sure. the parentheses on Sure. Okay. Like that. And then C is between, so it's well, equals, not equal. We are pushing the boundary to the limit. Can we still choose C to be one if it's not included? Answer is yes, and this is why. Because we are saying it's less than equal to, it's inequality, so I can always go over and say, because otherwise I have to take a limit as C approaching one, and that's the additional headache now, isn't it? So I still choose C to be one, so this is two, wrong color. Two to the N plus one, E to the two C over, C is equal to one now, so E squared and N plus one factorial. And then X is equal to one, you know what I'm saying? And then even if it's not included, this inequality still makes it okay. It still is a true statement. I kind of went over here. 
but I'm looking for the upper bound. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and I want this to be less than or equal to now 10 to the negative 6. You with me? Who's confused? Now, this thing, and only there's no good way to solve it, you just play with the calculator until you get the value you want. Uh, and n should be greater than or equal to 14 terms. Then you adjust your full loop in your program to include up to 14th term. You get it? Then you have this desired precision, accuracy, whatever. Let's try to integrate that thingy. And your first reaction is, what is that? It's not sine to the fourth power. That we know how to integrate. This is sine and then in, inside 4x quantity squared. You. I certainly don't know how to integrate this thing. Do you? But why would you not do such a thing? See, in many cases, applied math. In applied math, you have to solve differential equations a lot. You know, good old differential equations that we've been training for. And then whatever you had is just not really relevant to real life situation whatsoever. They were just too simple, too easy. No real life is that simple. Most of them don't even have a solution. Well, see, solving differential equation depends depending on your integrity. Can you integrate certain things or not? You know what I'm saying? Because differential equation comes in form of derivatives. And something like this shows up all the time. Actually, not that easy, but remember my programming example that does not have a general. Well, there is a technically a general solution, but that general solution comes in a form of integral. It's the integral of something. In most cases, you don't know how to integrate it. So let's say we have something ugly like this. In real life, it's a lot uglier than this, but let's just simulate real life with this easy example. Then, how are we supposed to solve this differential equation? One way is you convert this thingy inside to Taylor series. Thing about Taylor series is they are polynomials. Polynomials integrate very easily. Of course, the trade-off is you have infinitely many terms now. So that is the trade-off. You get it? So let's give this a shot, shall we? Okay, we'll microwave it. How do you like that? Yeah, I'm definitely microwaving this. So when we have sine of x, zoom in. Sine of x, do you remember what this was? After that quiz, you definitely do now, right? X minus X cubed over 3 factorial plus X to the 5th over 5 factorial minus X to the 7 over 7 factorial and dot, 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 right? And after doing series of transformations, we still have to see that the, see what daylight savings does to human brain? What's the word I'm looking for? Pattern. <gasps> That was so difficult. So I'm going to replace x with 4x and square while I'm at it, which is what's inside the integral. OK, I'm going to start with a constant because, oh no, I have an integral. See, the fact of daylight savings. So first one, I have 4x squared minus that thing is, so I have 4x to the 6th over 3 factorial now. Say yes. And then 4x, yes. thank you, to the 10th over 5 factorial minus 4x to the 14th over 7 factorial dot dot dot. How about that? Say yes. Now, we integrate. So if we integrate this, sine 4x here, square dx. Now I'm going to start with a c. 
because I don't want to put that C at the end of the eternity. Plus U, right? Okay, this is just 4x cubed over reverse chain rule 4 and times 3. How about that? That 3 from the integration and this 4 from the chain rule. U sub, if you will. Too much integrity? Okay, minus, here is 4x. This will be 7, so we'll have 7 here, right? And that that 4 still has to be here. And then we had 5, 5 factorial. Did I forget to put 3 factorial here? No, it's the first term. So we still have 3 factorial here. Good. First term did not have any denominator. So the next term plus, now this term, so we have 4x to the 11th, so we should have over 11 here, but 4 here, and then we had 5 factorial here. Good. Minus 4x, and the next one is 15. So we'll have 4 times 15 times 7 factorial. Da, da, da. Okay. We cannot get rid of C because that's just constant of integration, right? We need more initial value. So that's C plus, can we put the rest of them in sigma? Hmm, what do you say? Starting with this term. Good. All righty, what do you want to start the index with? That's kind of uh, tricky here. Before I say what we start the index with, what is the easiest one to write? It sure looks like that factorial thing. Correct? This is one factorial. This is three factorial, five factorial. So that's the odd number factorial, isn't it? So why don't we start with that? So is it 2n plus 1 factorial? If you want to start n from 0. If you want to start it from 1, then 2n minus 1. You get it? Say yes. Yes. Yeah. OK. Actually, I think I'm going to need a lot more space than this. Zoom in. OK, 2n plus 1. You like starting it from zero? Okay, sure. And then, oh, here's an easy one. We need four, because that four is there everywhere. And then, what about this thing? This number that goes here. And also, that shows up at four x. Uh, I need space for four x and that number. How did we get that number? Let's see, we started like this, right? Three, and we doubled it. You know what I'm saying? So this was already two n minus, two n plus one kind of thing. We doubled it, so we have four n plus two. Do you see these odd numbers are 2n plus 1? And now we doubled it. So it's 4n plus 2. And then we added 1 by integrating. Right, that became this. This 6 became 7. So check this out. 4n plus 3. Do you agree? Let's check. So when it's 3, right, that's... Uh, this is a second term, right? This is, no, zero, first term, right? So n is equal to one here. So 4n plus, yeah, that's seven. n is equal to two here. So 4n, eight plus three, 11. Yep, yeah, that works. You get it? Think like programmers. And then, of course, we need alternating sign. If I start with n, my first term becomes, starts with positive. So how about that? Oh, I have to write the same thing here, 4n plus 3. 
Ooh. Okay, so this is ugly, ugly trade-off, but at least we integrated it, right? And then how do we evaluate it? Well, we shove it into our program, table series program. You know what I'm saying? And then we just crank the numbers out and we calculate the error and how big is the error and stuff. But one thing we want to check is we want to find the interval of convergence. Eh? Yeah, let's do that. So we should that, have considered yes. the sum to infinity. Huh? Isn't it the sum to infinity? Yeah, it will. But I like to do it anyway. Let's do a ratio test. Limit and approaching. I think infinity. he's saying you forgot to write infinity at the top of the sigma sign. <laughs> oh, that, that's totally because of daylight savings. <laughs> yeah, limit. Okay, absolute value. Oh my God, let's write that ugly thing. 4x, 4n plus 3 over 4, 4n plus 3 and 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so numerator we would have 4x. 4n plus 7a, would that be too much? Okay, and then here's 4, and then 4n plus 7 here, and then 2n plus 3 factorial a. Y'all follow? Yeah. Okay, let's try to simplify that fraction without losing our sanity. Force cancel, can I still do this in daylight savings, right? Okay, I think here is 4n plus 3 and 4n plus 7 to start off. And then 4x term. Wait, I still have uh, one of the factorials left over, so let's just put it as 2n plus 3. Good. Well, this factorial differ by two, so I need one more term, 2n plus 2. Hey, is that how you cancel those factorials? You see something like factorials that you thought was pretty hard last year. Now it looks so trivial. What did I tell you? And then the x term, right? We have. 4x to the fourth power, eh? Say yes. Yeah. It's not too much algebra, right? Okay. Now let's take a limit. This approach is one. What about this whole thing? 4x to the fourth power over something with the n in the denominator. What does that approach? What do you say? Zero. That's zero, really? Well, as long as x is not equal to infinity, it's zero, right? I mean, you don't really care what x is. As long, all you need to know is it's a finite number. You know what I'm saying? So that is equal to zero, which is definitely less than one, right? Four, let me just write for all x that is real number which is not in, does not include infinity. So our interval of convergence, radius of convergence, which one do you want? They, I mean, in this case, they are about the same, but which one do you want me to write down? <laughs> it's not that hard, you just pick one. <laughs> I write both, radius of convergence. If you write it this way, it's infinity. If you want to say interval of convergence, then you have to write it like this. But you, do you remember that ball on the number line? Yeah. It's at, in this case, at origin, that thing is infinitely big to include all of the real number line. You get it? We want to find the sum of the series, right? Sum. 
meaning exact sum, not approximation, not computer simulation, not error, exact sum. Assuming this thing converges, of course, right? How are you going to do such a thing? Any idea? Let's notice some patterns, shall we? One half, one half, one half. So something like geometric series thingy going on with all these weird coefficients, right? See, this is one half to the first power. This is one half square, one half cube, one half to the fourth power. So it's one half to the nth power, but that one over n. We know this is convergent because without this one over n, it's geometric, so it's absolutely convergent, right? And then, okay, one over n will make it converge faster, and alternating sign will make it converge really, really fast. But that's not the point here. We want to know exactly what this thing has up to. This one over n messes up, right? If they are not there, that would be great. Any brilliant ideas? Oh, come on, somebody let your brilliance shine. Is the is it the next term or is that just mm, zero? Next one will have a one fifth and one half to the fifth power, right? Four, four, three, three, two, two. We wish we can get rid of this coefficient. Geometric series? I don't know. Yeah, without these things, it's geometric series and we know how to add those up. But this is messing us up. This is not quite geometric, so that's geometric series summation technique does not work here. Ah, don't you wish you can cancel this for three? Ah, multiply everything by like n. Divide everything by wait. Or, or multiply maybe. If you divide this whole thing by something or multiply by something. Then, see, if it's just one thing, if they are like all one third, then we can multiply by three, and then our final answer, we divide that by three to offset. But these things vary, and you cannot really divide these and multiply the different things term by term, and we don't know how to deal with that at the end. So that, yeah, oh, brainstorm, brainstorm. Like derivative? Derivative. Oh yeah, if you take a derivative, these things come down and cancel. Except there's only one problem. That was brilliant. Except there's no x. These are all constants. So what happens if you take a derivative of constant? They all die. Zero. Oh no, alpha oh, derivative sounds like a good idea, right? Except this is a technique. We just create Taylor series. That mimics this. Okay, watch this. I'm going to replace all of the one halves with x. So x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4 and dot dot dot, right? And at the end, we need f of one half. This is our answer. You know what I'm saying? If we can somehow sum this up in terms of x, then we just evaluate this function at one half, then we get this entire thingy back. You know what I'm saying? That was clever now, wasn't it? I know. Huh? Now we can take a derivative because this is a function now, right? So this becomes one, this becomes minus x, oh, just x. And this becomes plus x squared and minus x cubed and da, da, da. Oh, that's definitely geometric series, right? Shall we review summation of geometric series, how you're supposed to show your work? I mean, we know what the answer is. Our answer is 1 over 1 plus x, right? But do you know how to show your work? You want me to show you or? Yeah, let's show it for the sake of people, other people. Not that you don't know this, you all know it. I'm pretty sure of it. 
But for the sake of people who are watching this video, we'll do this one last time. How's that? That's a nice excuse to see it, right? So Pn of x, we have to terminate the series. So 1 minus x plus x squared and dot, 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 all the way to x to the nth power. You notice that I conveniently did not write the sign of this because like, it's plus or minus. I don't know what it is. Depends on n. And then we multiply both sides by common ratio. So we have x minus and let's multiply by negative x. How's that? Erase. Computer, erase. I'm going to leave myself a little bit more room here so that they line up nicely. So we have negative x and plus x squared minus x cubed dot 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 and this will be x to the n plus 1. You with me? Okay, we subtract. You could have just multiplied by x and add. It's the same thing, same effect. But this will be 1 minus negative x common factor p sub n a. And here everything cancels. This cancels, this cancels, this cancels, that cancels, whatever's there. So leaving you with the first term, 1 minus plus or minus x to the n plus 1. You with me? So our p n is equal to 1 plus or minus x to the n plus 1 over 1 plus x. Good. Good. Now yeah. we take limit. So our thingy f prime of x was our thingy is limit of n approaching infinity of our pn. Okay, and that we want to be 1 over 1 plus x, and that comes with condition. What was our condition? Absolute value of x less than 1. Mm -hmm. Good, because we want this thing to die, so that needs to be less than 1 to be decaying, exponentially decaying function. We are okay because our x is one half and nothing else. We are not interested in any other number other than one half. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we are back here now. You get it? Yeah, take that. Roast the turkey out of the oven. Put it on the table. Now let us carve. We are not quite there yet. We don't want to substitute one half now because we want f of x, remember? So we integrate now. See, we differentiate it to sum it up. Now we have to integrate it back. You know what I'm saying? You borrowed something from the universe. Now you have to pay the universe back. You get the analogy. Where did I get that right? It just came to me. Okay, whatever. Is it Ellen? And are we sure? Okay, we are sure. Okay, initial condition, right? So let's plug in at F0, right? Okay, if you plug in 0, where are we plugging in 0? We know what to do about this, right? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write it like that. At X, uh, yeah, I'll just plug in 0. Where do we plug in 0? I know what this is, right? Well, how do I get the value of this function? The other series? Oh yeah, this thing, right? That's what f is. So if I plug in zero, the whole thing is zero. So I get zero on this side, but this is ln one plus c. So that tells you c is equal to zero, eh? Good, now we are done. So we can conclude now. Remember our series that we wanted? And starting from 1 to infinity, what was it? You, that thingy on that corner, right? So negative 1 to the n minus 1 power, was it? I wish I can remember. Yeah, minus 1 to the 1 over n. 
And then one half to the nth power is same thing as f of one half, correct? And we have our f. Our f is here, right? Ln. So you just put one half there, so ln three over two is the exact sum of this series. They know. My God. Wasn't that a neat, neat trick? Okay, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean you can find this exact sum of all series. Okay, we just got lucky here. Right? After noticing this and creating this and derivative, there is a good chance that we still may not know how to add this thing up. Okay, this problem was designed for you to have it worked out. Okay, but in case I ever give something like this on the test, that means you know it's going to work out now, right? So you go out, search for that Taylor series function. You have Taylor converted into Taylor series, and you look for that function that matches your series. You get it? Okay, let's look at number 22 first. First ratio test. We are finding the interval of convergence, right? So let's do a ratio test. Ratio test is done by limit n approaching infinity of gigantic fraction. So we have our current term x minus root 2 to n plus 1 over 2 to the nth power. So on the numerator, I would have x minus root 2 to n plus 3 over 2 to the n plus 1 power with the absolute value. Good. OK. So that thing simplifies to limit as an approaching infinity of x minus root 2 squared over 2. Right? And you notice that there's no n. n just got cancelled out. So this is just that, x minus root 2 squared over 2. And that needs to be less than 1. Good. Now, how do you solve that inequality? You have to be a little bit careful. You cannot just square both sides and do all of that. This just means x minus root 2 squared is less than one, less than two. Good. Good. What does that mean? If you just take a square root on both sides, is it true? No, it's not quite true. If you're going to take a square root, it's like almost like absolute value business. This, and then you have to attach this on the other side. Do you see that? You see that? Is that too much algebra? OK, then add square root 2. So we have 0 on this side and x. And then we have 2 square root 2. This is the interior. OK? Now, then we have to test the boundaries, correct? I'll test the boundary with a different color here. So this is the interior for now. So boundary when x is equal to, let's do 2 square root 2. OK. Then if you put 2 square root 2 into this series, it just becomes square root 2 to the 2n plus 1 power over 2 to the nth power. Correct. Now you're thinking, what is that thing, right? Let's just think about it a little bit. And 0, 2. Is that square root to the 2n times square root 2 over 2 to the nth power? Say yes. 
Is this thing equal to? That's ugly. Why is my sigma so ugly? Still ugly, isn't it? Is that thing according to rule of exponent? That? My God, it is, isn't it? And they cancel. So what we have left is 0 to infinity of root 2. This just means root 2 plus root 2 plus root 2 forever. And that's definitely infinity. Good. So it does not make it at 2 root 2. Okay, let's test it at x is equal to 0 then. Okay, this is our series. So if you just plug in 0, then that just means negative. Then our series become this. Infinity of negative, well, 0. Ah, let me look at it again. Negative root 2. Negative root 2 to the 2n plus 1 over 2 to the n's. So far so good. Now we can play the same game again. 0 to infinity of, you can say this is negative. Uh, I'll just do it the long way for the future students. Negative root 2 to the 2n times negative root 2. So far, so good. Over 2 to the n. Now, do you see this thing still cancels? If you take square, this thing just becomes 2. So this is same as 2 to the n, eh? I'll write it. 0 to infinity of 2 to the n over 2 to the n. And you have negative root 2, eh? So our series become, do I have enough space? Negative root two, that's ugly. Negative root two. It's just negative root two plus root two minus root two plus something like that. So this is divergent as well, isn't it? Good. So our interval of convergence for that reason now. So therefore our interval of convergence happens to be the interior from that thing is zero to two to two. and neither side of the boundary makes it. Any questions about this one? Before I start 26. Shifang. Uh, Ms. Kim, I, I noticed that um, some of the turn, <coughs> sorry, uh, some of the turn does not inherit uh, the absolute bar. Is that because for the turn with an even power, they are by default positive? Yeah, if you square yeah. anything, that's always. I see. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, then we'll look at 26. Okay. Ln x to the nth power. Looks like nth root test is very handy thing here, correct? You can still do it with a ratio test that gives you exactly the same thing, but I just wanted to remind you of nth root test, okay? So let's perform n's root test. All many textbooks just call it the root test. And it's done this way. n's root of the absolute value of ln x to the n's power. You know what I'm saying? Uh, technically, this is in, uh, Let me rewrite the whole thing. Technically, it's the absolute value of ln x the nth power close absolute value. How's that? Okay. So it just tells you the limit of and approaching infinity of Linux. 
Okay. And you notice that N disappeared, right? That's just ln x then. Now you want that to be less than one. How do you solve this inequality? This just means ln x is between negative one and positive one, correct? And we take E here, here, here. So we have one over E and X and E. Ha, huh. that's the interior part. Good. Now we'll test the boundary. So if X happens to be E, then let's look at this thing. Our series, my sigma, I need to fix, I need to learn how to write sigma. Zero to infinity, if you plug in E, this is just one, right? What that means is it's just one plus one plus one plus dot 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 forever, and that's definitely infinity. So that's why it doesn't make it. What about if x is equal to one over e, e to the negative one? Then our series, if you put one over e, that's just negative one, isn't it? Of course, that means starting at zero, so one minus one plus one minus one. This is oscillation, isn't it? It's either one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So this is still, we don't know what that is, but it's divergent, I know that much. Good. So my interval of convergence in this case, so boundaries don't make it again. Interval of convergence happens to be that thingy. So one over E, and E boundaries excluded. Good. Questions before I move on to 28 now? Okay, let's do 28. Oh, look, another root test? Or ratio test? Root test it is, right? Whenever you see the whole thing to the nth power, that's perfect for root test now, isn't it? Yeah, so let's do it. So we have limit n approaching infinity of n's root, gigantic square root of absolute value of sine x over 2 n's power close absolute value. Good. And then likewise, this thing cancels. So only thing you get is absolute value of sine x over two. Good. And then notice that n got cancelled out, so we don't have n. So this is just sine x absolute value over two. And then you are thinking, wow, how do you know what that is, right? You don't have to know. I know this is less than or equal to one half, correct? Because sine x fluctuates between one and negative one. So absolute value of that is less than one divided by two. And that's, of course, less than one for all x value. Good. For all x real. How about that? So it converges everywhere. You get it? So therefore, we say for this one, the interval of convergence is all real number. How about that? 